this video, we'll be looking at a different method. I call it the cheat method or the shortcut method to factorize a trinomial like this, where there's a coefficient of the squared term. So x squared doesn't have to be x, but you know what I mean? x squared, the number in front of it is not a one. Okay, we used to it being a one, that's easy trinomials. And you cannot take out this number, the three, as a highest common factor. You So you can't remove it and then do normal trinomials. That three is there to stay. So in the previous video, we did discuss the longer method, the cross method, where you diagonally multiply. Most teachers, most textbooks use this method, but today I'm going to show you another method that I was shown by an amazing maths mentor of mine. Okay, you're allowed to do it in exams because remember when you are asked to factorize a trinomial, you don't get marks for the working out. What you get marks for is your final answer. So if this is your question, you get your marks, your two marks for your trinomial for your two final brackets. So whatever method you use to get to that final answer, that's up to you as long as you do it correctly. So let's take a look at this method. Here are the steps for this method. Let's apply it to the first one that we actually did in the previous video. So the question will say factorize the following. And as you can see, this is definitely a trinomial. Always try and take out a highest common factor first. But as we mentioned earlier, you cannot take out a highest common factor in this example. So we know it's going to be a trinomial. Our answer is going to be two brackets. So immediately I write my two brackets down. I'm going to fill in these two brackets. But the method I'm going to use now is different than the method in the previous video. So there's the steps. We're going to apply the cheat method. Now on the side of your exam paper, I want you to write cheat method where you can write working out. I know the word cheat maybe makes you feel like oh, I'm not doing the right thing. But remember, it doesn't matter when we mark trinomials, we mark this bracket and we mark this bracket. However you get to the brackets is up to you. As long as you scratch out your working out afterwards, your teacher doesn't accidentally mark your working out, you're all good. So how this method works, let's follow the steps one by one. I'm going to rewrite the question over here. Okay, so my working out is going to be this side. Just follow what I'm doing. That's the question. That's the trinomial I'm factorizing. The first step, step one, take away the number in front of the squared term. So this is the number in front of the squared term. So we're going to take it away. So it's going to be x squared instead of 3x squared. We've taken it away and multiply it by the constant term. So we steal away the 3 and we multiply it by the constant term. It's always going to be this one at the end. It's always going to be the term with no variable, the constant term. So we stole away the 3. It's now x squared plus 4x, we multiplied by the 3, so we're kind of doing this, times, and we get plus 3. Now that's step 1 done. Step 2, do the easy trinomial. So take a look at this new trinomial, not this one anymore, take a look at this one. Can you do a trinomial there? Okay, so two brackets, we're trying to make the 3 over here, so that is 1 times 3. We need to choose the correct combination that's going to give me a positive 4. So how do we get a plus four? We need a plus one and a plus three. One plus three gives me four and one times three gives me three. If you don't know how to do the easy trinomials, you need to go watch the previous videos in this playlist. So step two, do the easy trinomial, done. Step three, put what you stole in step one. So what did I steal in step one? I stole a three. Put that back in front of the X's in each bracket. So in front of this x here, I'm going to put a 3 because that's what I stole. Remember, I stole a 3. And in front of this x here, I'm also going to put a 3. Okay, so done. See if you can factorize any of the brackets. So take a look at each bracket. See if you can factorize it. So let's take a look at this bracket first. 3x plus 1. Can I take out a highest common factor? No, I cannot. It's just... 3x plus 1. So this is officially my first bracket in my main answer. Then look at the second bracket. Can I factorize it? Can I take a highest common factor out of this? 3x plus 3. Yes, I can. I can take out a 3. So take the 3 out. What's left? x plus 1. If you had to multiply this back in, you would get the green. Okay, so you take out a 3. This is what is in your second bracket in your answer. So the thing that you took out, if you do end up taking stuff out in step four, that doesn't go in your final answer. 
only the brackets go in your answer. So essentially, only this, 3x plus 1, there we go, that's part of your final answer. And x plus 1, that's part of your final answer. And remember, how do we mark you? There and there. If I haven't convinced you yet that this is a nice method, let's do two more. My second example is asking me to factorize this trinomial. Now, if you take a look at the trinomial, can you take out a highest common factor? No. We've got 12, 11, and 2. We can't take out anything as a highest common factor. So now we know we need to do a trinomial. But because there's a number in front of the squared term, we're going to have to apply our new method. Our answer is going to be two brackets. And on the side, I'm just going to write cheat method. What I should have done in the previous example, scratch this out when you're done. Okay. So it's very clear that this is your answer. Okay. So over here. I'm going to just start off with it looking normal. Then remember, step one, take away the number in front of the squared term. So take that away. And we're going to multiply it by the constant term. So it's going to become x squared. That 12 is gone now. Minus 11x. And we say 2 times 12. So that gives me 24. Then we're going to do this easy trinomial like normal. Step two, do the easy trinomial. So two brackets. We want a 24. Okay, so think carefully. That's one times 24 or two times 12 or three times eight or four times six. Lots of options here. Okay, so now which one, remember when I add or subtract them, will give me the middle term, which is negative 11. If you're struggling with basic trinomials, you need to go back in my playlist and watch those first. Because at the moment we're doing an easy trinomial, which should be easy at this stage. So we need to make a negative 11. It's definitely not that, this one or this one or 6 and 4, that gives me 10, so not that. 3 and 8, that will end up giving me a negative 11. How is it going to give me a negative 11? Remember, if it's a positive 3 and a positive 8, that's going to give me a positive 11. I don't want a positive 11. I want a negative 11. So you need to play around with the signs. It's going to be negative 3 and a negative 8. I hope you all agree. Minus 3, minus 8, negative 3, negative 8 gives me negative 11. So in this bracket, it's going to be x minus 3. And then x minus 8. Also, just double check. If you say negative 3 times negative 8, it gets me positive 24, which it should. That's my last term. Okay, so we did the easy trinomial correctly. So that's step 2 done. Then step 3, put what you stole in step 1 back in front of the x's in each bracket. So I've still got what I stole. I highlighted what I stole. We put that back over here and back over there. So it's going to look like this. 12 x minus 3 and 12 x minus 8. And that's step 3 done. Step 4, see if you can factorize any of the brackets. So looking at the first bracket, can I take anything out as a factor? Yes, I can take out a 3. I'm left with 4x minus 1. Okay, I hope you can see that. And in the second bracket, what can I take out? I can take out a 4. Because 4 goes into 12 and 4 goes into 8. I'm left with a 3x minus 2. Now remember what the last step says. Only the brackets go in your answer. So this is not part of your final answer. That's not part of your final answer, just these brackets. So your final answer, 4x minus 1, and then 3x minus 2. Some of my students often ask me, ma'am, is it fine if I do this for my final answer? Perfect. You've just switched the brackets around. Then remember, cross out your cheat method because all we care about are these two brackets in your final answer. If you're still not sold, let's do one more. Okay, now I chose this one for a very particular reason. You'll see why when we end up doing our cheat method on the side. First things first, see if you can do a highest common factor. So look at all three terms. Can you take out anything as a highest common factor? No, there's no number that divides into 18, 3, and 10. So we know we need to do a trinomial. Our answer is going to be 2 brackets. I just want to quickly remind you, maybe you didn't even watch the previous video, but remember, if you don't want to use this new method I'm teaching in this video, the old method would involve you going 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6, all these different combinations, that's to give me 18. And then to get 10, remember, you would have to say, okay, that is 1 times 10 
or 10 times 1, remember you have to do the reverse of the last one, and then 2 times 5 or 5 times 2, and you have to pick one of these and one of these and match them up and cross multiply and trial and error, and it takes very long to figure out which combination is correct. So let's save time. Let's use the steps that you can memorize, apply them. They always work. Let's use the cheat method. Step one, take away the number in front of the squared term and multiply it by the constant term, which is this term over here. So we're going to take it away and multiply it. So it's going to be x squared minus 3x and then 18 times negative 10, negative 180. Now, the reason I chose this example is because of this big number here that we now have to deal with. But I'll show you that it's not actually that difficult. Do the easy trinomial. Okay, so we're going to do a trinomial. This is the easy trinomial. There's no number in front of the x squared. Now, people get put off and they think, oh, this is going to take forever to find out all the combinations that give me 180. Think about it like this, grade 10s, 11s, 12s, whoever's watching this video. We're trying to make three. So we basically, or negative three, we need two very big numbers to give me, you know, almost similar in size to give me a three. We can't have one times 180. That's nowhere near going to give me a three. So let's try and divide 80 by some bigger numbers that are closer to each other. So let's see if 12 goes into 180, for example, or 10. 180 is 10 times 18. 10 and 18, does that give me three? No, 18 minus 10 is eight. Okay, let's try 12. 12, does 12 go into 180? Yes, 12 times 15. Do you see 12 and 15? Already you can see that 15 minus 12, these are big numbers that are quite close to each other. 15 minus 12, that gives me three. Okay, we're trying to make a negative three. So you have to think a little bit more carefully. It's not 15 minus 12 because that gives me a positive three. Let's do negative 15 plus 12. Yes, negative 15 plus 12 does indeed give me a negative 3. Good. And if I multiply negative 15 and 12, it gives me negative 180. So x minus 15 and x plus 12. That works for my easy trinomial. Then put what you stole in step one back in front of the x's in each bracket. So what did I steal in step one? It is actually still highlighted, 18. I need to put 18 over there and 18 over there. So it's going to look like this. I've just put 18 back. Done. See if you can factorize any of the brackets. Can I take anything out over here? Yes, I can. Remember, it's always the biggest number that can go into 18 and 15. I think it's 3. I'm left with 6x minus 5. Yes, that's perfect. Can I factorize this? Yes, I can take out a 6. I'm left with 3x plus 2. There we go. So I was able to factorize the brackets. And remember, only the brackets go in your answer. Not that, not that. So your answer, 6x minus 5 and 3x plus 2. Now, whether or not you prefer, and scratch that out at the end, whether or not you prefer this method, which it works, whether you prefer this, or whether you prefer the crossover multiplication method, I hope you feel comfortable with the more complicated trinomials. I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye.